It seems like we are set to hire our new manager by the beginning of next month. Today, my friends, we discuss all the latest reports coming out today surrounding Mauricio Pochettino replacements. So we have a ton of things to get into. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button, share your thoughts and opinions. And finally, thank you to everyone that's shown love in the comments with their really nice supportive words. Of course, things haven't been as ideal behind the scenes, but it's nice to feel that encouragement from your love. So obviously, I had to express some gratitude. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let's get straight into things now. It seems like by the end of next week, we are set to hire our new manager. Now reports came out from Sky Sports and from Matt Law today confirming this news and it makes a lot of sense because we still need a little bit more time to just fully have these conversations with these candidates to finally pick the best ones. Now there have been some rumours floating around behind the scenes, there are a lot of like you know big constructive articles too. I'll be discussing that in the second part of the video but to focus on this first part, it does seem like we have finally dropped interest in Mikel of Girona and Sebastian Hunes at Stuttgart, which is no surprise to me because why would they leave their clubs after securing improbable Champions League qualifications? They're not going to do that. So let's not waste our time with them. But we are learning about lead candidates from Matt Law. There are four right now. Three we know of and one is a surprise mystery, which I'll be discussing later on too. But from the three candidates that are very interested and signing for us. You're looking at Thomas Frank of Brentford. You're looking at Ipswich Towns, Kieran McKenna. And you're looking at Enzo Maresca of Leicester C. But for this fourth mystery manager, he is a high profile manager. So he probably has a bit more experience and obviously a bigger reputation compared to these three other managers. And I find that quite interesting. But anyway, supposedly Matt Law states that the new coach will be the final jigsaw piece to complete the modern structure that's been created at our football club. Now, I think that's a very strong statement. Hopefully they get it right because this is currently the fifth manager since this new ownership has taken over. You know, they had all these other words for Graham Potter, for Mauricio Pochettino, and sometimes they ring a little bit hollow. So we have to finally see if this fifth manager will be fifth time lucky now because if this doesn't work out again, I feel you have to really question the leadership at this football club and the type of people that we've given this type of responsibility and power to to oversee this new direction and new change because it might not be working but again we're not at that time yet let's see how things go on and i know that currently a lot of people in the fan base are feeling a bit worried about the future don't have much faith and trust and i'm not saying that you're silly to not have any of that because i also have a bit of doubts myself obviously when you're learning that Mauricio Pochettino wasn't really appreciated for having his opinions and when you're reading things about the club wanting a yes man, as I said, I thought it was a bit cynical to maybe see it that way, even though the reality probably suggests that. But I think this also suggests the new direction and this modern change that you're seeing in the game right now. And, you know, take in point Liverpool as an example. They rehired uh, Michael Edwards to be their CEO of football. And when he went back to Liverpool, he went back knowing that he would have full power and full control to run the club in his image and how he sees best fit. And I think with all the investment that you're seeing from all these billionaire foreign investors from the States and everywhere, they like guarantees. They like, you know, tangible results in front of them. They want to feel like with all the money they're investing in that it's being used wisely. So they're going to hire all these, you know, specialist roles, data analysts who are going to give them the figures, the numbers, the results. That's what they're doing. And obviously with Jurgen Klopp leaving and, Liverpool replacing him with Arnie Slot. Slot signed for Liverpool knowing the fact that he will be the head coach. And it seems like this is the direction that we're seeing across the game right now. So we're not doing anything too different compared to this new modern trend. But as I'm also saying, we have no idea at the moment whether this will be a successful route for us. That is the worry that I still personally have. I have to worry a little bit because I think to myself, you know, this, you know, insistence of just stripping down all the players that we produce here to sell them for pure profit. There used to be a time back then where maybe managers would be calling for players and clubs would say, no, stick to what you have. But we're doing the complete opposite when these are some really good players that help your squad. 
that give you that Chelsea identity, that help the academy. I feel like there needs to be a bit of a balance in terms of integrating both. And this is where I personally have some doubts with our directors at times, because it feels like they want to do everything exclusively in their image at the expense of everything good that already pre-existed them at this football club. I don't think we have to change things too egregiously. Let's utilize what we have alongside refining and improving it to take us to the next level. That is what I want to see personally. But anyway, my friends, that is the first part of this news video out of the way. Let's now discuss and focus on these candidates in more greater detail so we can learn all about the latest news surrounding each candidate. Now, I want to focus on who this mystery high profile manager could be. Now, there's only two names on my mind. One is going to be Ruben Amarim of Sporting Lisbon and the other would be Roberto Di Zerbi. Now that it seems like Thiago Mosa is set to now go to Juventus, the reports suggesting that Di Zerbi may be the alternative to Mosa now for Juventus are definitely over. He has already left uh, Brighton in a pretty similar fashion in which Mauricio Pochettino left us, where, you know, between him and Tony Bloom, there was just a cultural difference now. You know, Di Zerbi felt like he can't really expand or improve upon things because, because he's limited by Brighton's philosophy. And Brighton feel like they need to hire a manager that can really understand what his role is about. And Brighton are the ones to decide to allow Desiree to leave by mutual consent, even though it meant that they did rescind receiving like a high fee for like, you know, his uh, sellout clause. But they made that decision because Brighton are more important. There's no point wasting a summer waiting for a club to come in to spend big money to sign Desiree. And then that coming at the expense of building for next season and building for the future. It makes sense for Brighton to hire a new manager right now who understands what his role is, what he's meant to do, and can actually harmonize the current structure with him. So it would not surprise me if the Zerbi would be a name because even when Pochettino was being linked last summer, the Zerbi was also being linked. And reports back last year stated that People at this football club appreciate his expertise, his style of play, his football. And the current rumour coming out today suggests that maybe Todd Bowley is more in favour of a move for De Zerbi, whilst maybe Agbali prefers other manager replacements. So that's quite interesting. Time will tell. But I've personally felt like this interest in De Zerbi won't just end anytime soon. I know that Winston Lee is a big fan of him. Of course, we know that we have a lot of the players that worked really well under the Zerbi that we've already signed. He could come in. He could help maybe mitigate the, you know, the uh, frustration and the uh, disappointment the players that seen Pochettino leave because they're hiring someone where a lot of these players already have a pre-existing relationship with him. Maybe that can kind of ease that transition away from Pochettino to a new manager. Maybe that can make the players a bit more hopeful and confident that Okay, we're going to play some good football. We know what De is about. We've heard good things about him. Let's make this work. This rumour that's been out for like over a week now suggests that De Zerbi's future has already been made. A club have already paid the 4.3 million compensation fee towards Brighton. But due to legal reasons, everything is being kept under wraps for now. I don't know if De Zerbi ended up being the manager that we hired. Would it necessarily surprise us if we look back at all the evidence that could have been in front of our faces this entire time. But for the other high profile manager, I think that's naturally going to be Ruben Amarim. And you know what? I say this because I've heard personally the two main favorites for the role right now is between him and Kieran McKenna. And it makes me think about the reports that came out last month suggesting that we did hold secret meetings in London with Ruben Amarim when he allegedly came to hold talks with West Ham. At the time, that was just some smoke and mirrors, but now it seems like everything is finally making a bit of sense. Now, we do know that currently he's protected by a 20 million euro release clause at Sporting Lisbon. However, there is a gentleman's agreement within that deal, which means that a club could buy him for up to 8.6 million pounds. Now, we know that Sporting Lisbon are set to play in their cup final later this Sunday. So naturally, with the timing of this news, the mystery around his name, you don't want to take away that focus from Ruben Amarim and Sporting Lisbon. He apologized for the leaked information that came up between him and West Ham. And naturally, he won't be making that same mistake again. And it will be interesting to see 
who we decide to hire between these main two favorites. But at the same time, listen, if your main two favorite options like fail for any reason, any reason at all, you need to have backups so your Deserbies and everyone else still have strong possibilities to potentially take over. I think Amarim's a very interesting name, of course, he ticks a lot of boxes in terms of the possession style approach with the pivot. Of course, he's had success winning silverware, titles, and most importantly, he is someone that teaches football, that has a philosophy of play. But I think maybe he might have to adapt, right? But who knows? I mean, reports came out over the past few days suggesting that we could sign one to two centre-backs. Could we decide maybe it's time to move back to a back three under Amarim? Or could Amarim potentially adapt his setup and system to maybe incorporate using more of an inverted midfield player? Now, of course, just because he's using a back three at Sporting Lisbon, doesn't necessarily mean that he won't adapt his ideas and systems because he adapted to a back three whilst at Sporting Lisbon, but it was a gradual thing over time. But with the players we have at his disposal, you like to think that he does something. He has that reputation. But I'm thinking about things like, okay, could he maybe push the club to move for a Jokoresh over some like Victor Osman based on how much money it could cost us to get Osman over the line? Time will tell on this one. Share your thoughts and opinions. Do you believe what I'm saying? Do you not? Do you think there could be another high profile manager that none of us are even thinking about? Let us know in the comments. But now let's discuss everything else we know about these three leading candidates, starting with Ipswich Town's Kieran McKenna. Now today I was going to release like a full deep dive on his system, his ideas, but I think I need more time. I'm going to release that tomorrow instead, so stay tuned for that one. But as we know, McKenna is a very popular man. Not only are we looking at him, but also Man United and Brighton. And Brighton actually earmarked him to be the successor to De Zerbi. And the fact that we are now expressing some interest, clearly that's working in our favour because today reports came up revealing that McKenna would be more inclined to accept our approach and accept our projects compared to the other clubs. And that makes a lot of sense. Now, McKenna has a big reputation in this game for a long time. He's one of the leading coaches in the country getting great experience, actually even working under Pochettino at Spurs, of course, working under Solskjaer at Man United, being renowned for his great youth work within academy setups as well. And it's quite clear that McKenna has been seen as like one of the protégés of English football based on how he's exceeded and excelled at every level within football. So is it any surprise that since taking over Ipswich Town, he's got two consecutive back-to-back -back promotions, but what's even more impressive is that Ipswich Town didn't give him a massive transfer budget. He had to work with what he had. And most importantly, he had to improve upon what he had. I'm looking forward to like releasing this video tomorrow. I'm going to go into a lot more detail about this side because as we know, this ownership wants a manager that can also educate and teach the players. And I think McKenna is definitely that profile that ticks every list and demand that we want. Now, he's not necessarily a possession manager, even though he will keep the ball when he has to. It's quite hard to actually give like a lazy name behind like what his football is about. I think it's quite adaptable. I think it's quite intelligent. I think it's quite fluid. And I think that he impresses a lot of figures and coaches in this country. So I think the McKenna links... Listen, I've been watching a bit of Ipswich Town myself, doing a lot more research for the video, and I can see why they're impressive. And in my opinion, I would say that they were the best team in the championship, even though they came second. I think they led in so many key stats and metrics. I think that they scored the most goals as well too. They didn't lose as many games compared to Leicester. They drew a lot of games, and that's understandable when you realize, okay, maybe McKenna has been making Ipswich overperform for the past two years now, and I think that is quite impressive. At the moment, it seems like Bryson may be calling the interest in McKenna because they feel like, okay, they've lost out on the race to sign him, and his buyout won't be that expensive as it's between three to four million. So let's watch this space, but in my opinion, I see him as like the unofficial favorite to replace Pochettino. Now we discuss Enzo Maresca, and yesterday it was reported by Damasio that he was one of the lead candidates to replace Pochettino because the club appreciate the work he's done. Now, he does currently have an 8.5 million pound release clause, which is quite a lot of money. And listen, Leicester City don't want to lose out on a manager that literally got them back into the Premier League that easily. So if you want him, you have to pay double the money compared to the rest of the other managers. But Reska is 
Favoured for his approach of the game. As we all know, he does like to invert his fullbacks. We know that he uses attacking mids alongside wingers. He likes to keep the ball. And he is like a disciple of Pep Guardiola, of course, coming from Man City. And we do know that Joe Shields, as it's been reported, who has worked with him over the years at Man City, really recommends him and really rates his work. You know, he works with young players. His ideas are quite modern. And I think Leicester, we can't forget the game they played against us in the FA Cup. If, if it wasn't for the red cards, who knows what could have happened because they were going toe to toe against us in that game. And it was actually quite a difficult game, which is testament to Maresca's work. And finally, for the final candidate, we turn towards Brentford's Thomas Frank. Now, it's interesting that he'd be someone that's on the list because I thought ideally we wanted to hire a, a young manager in the mold of like a uh, Xabi Alonso project. And Thomas Frank is 50 years old, but equally he has experience working within similar structures. You know, clubs like Brentford, uh, clubs like Brighton, Liverpool, us, we're all trying to do the same thing at the moment. And Thomas Frank has really got Brentford playing some good football. They're a difficult team to play against. I think what could help is the fact that we've already hired his uh, set piece specialist and technician in Bernardo Cueva. And you can maybe think about synergizing them together and using his approaches here because Thomas Frank has shown to be someone that's quite adaptable, someone who's quite fluid. He can use a back three, he can use three in midfield, he can use a diamond, but is he necessarily someone who is that teacher that's going to teach the young players about the game, about the philosophy and about the way to be compared to other managers that were being linked to? I'm not too sure. Now, he did sign a contract in 2022, which meant that there's a three million pound release clause inserted in this deal. So he wouldn't cost you too much money. And as Thomas Frank has said in recent interviews, of course, he loves his time at Brentford, but he doesn't see himself at Brentford for his whole career. And it's quite obvious that he's looking up now and he wants to take one of the big jobs that become available. And moving to us, you know, you're still within London. Ideally, you're thinking to yourself and your agent, let's make this happen. Let's have these conversations. I'm sure he's going to present some incredible presentations to try and entice the board to go his route. But I see him as like the outlier at this point in time. And I think we turn to him if we fail or if we're not able to hire the other managers that I think we prefer more at this point in time. So my friends, that is everything we know about the latest news around managers. Um, yeah, crazy reports. And tomorrow... I'm going to start doing more tactical pieces on individual managers, starting with McKenna. And I'm looking forward to releasing that one tomorrow. So my friends, thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. So my friends, thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys all later. Cool.